Greetings from Tokyo, my dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I hope you are all doing very well today. Continuing with my discussion of the works of the filmmaker Kazuo Hara, today I would like to share with you some comments that I have regarding his great work from 1987. This film is considered one of the greatest Japanese documentaries of all time, one of the greatest documentaries of all time. And I would even dare say that it is one of the greatest films in Japanese cinema. This film is the famous, the infamous, The Emperor's Naked Army Marches On. film is known in Japanese, or its Japanese title is Yuki Yuki Te Shingun, which is translated into God's Army Goes Forth Marching, or God's Army Goes Marching. The English title is The Emperor's Naked Army Marches On, and this is a film, the subject of which being the Japanese gentleman whose name is Kenzo Okuzaki, who is in his early 60s at the time this film is being shot, which is in the early 1980s. He was a soldier in the army, and in particular he was part of the Japanese army campaign in New Guinea during the uh, tail end of the war. And that's where he was when the war ended. And that's a very key component of this film. And when he returned to Japan after the end of the war, he had a very, um, how should I put it, uh, he, his past or his background became very complicated uh, due primarily to the fact that he was tried and convicted of a number of uh, crimes that he committed. Uh, this is prior to the start of shooting of this film. And... Um, uh, he was uh, he was found guilty of killing uh, another human being, a real estate broker. He was also uh, found guilty in a crime that involved him throwing pachinko balls at the emperor in front of the imperial palace, and that's the incident that he has gained the most notoriety for. Um, and uh, this was in 1969. Uh, he then later was uh, found, um, uh, he was later found uh, distributing leaflets that depicted uh, Emperor Hirohito and um, the imperial family in a sort of a crude, uh, sexually uh, crude um, ways or pornographic ways. And so uh, this was seen to be um, a breach of uh, laws pertaining to obscenity. And uh, then he was also uh, suspected of some kind of crimes, but though he was never uh, convicted uh, with respect to um, uh, him basically trying to approach the house of former Prime Minister uh, Kakui Tanaka. And so, uh, although he was never convicted, the, uh, the suspicion was that he was trying to stake out the house uh, of the former prime minister in order to kill him. And this is due, the suspicion is due in, in large part because uh, Okuzaki had actually published a book. And the book was basically a proclamation to kill Tanaka Kakue, which is uh, essentially uh, an expression of Okuzaki's hate and vitriol and intense, intense hatred towards uh, the system and towards public figures and in particular towards the emperor and the emperor system and based upon what he sees as these uh, great abhorrent crimes against humanity. Um, and so he basically is a gentleman who takes it upon himself to go on these 
um, sort of uh, crusades of justice, at least in his eyes anyway. And uh, in order to do that, uh, he essentially uh, embarks upon uh, what some might consider to be just uh, shows of sort of public spectacle of calling attention to oneself. But in fact, he goes much further, as indicated in, by his past, the fact that he was tried and convicted of a number of crimes. Um, but also, uh, he was, and he was uh, imprisoned and actually in solitary confinement for a number of years as a result of those crimes. But also, because of his past as a former soldier, he has focused his hatred and his what he sees to be his pursuit of justice towards what he sees to be great atrocities and injustices that have been committed during the war uh, by certain elements in the Japanese military. And he not only sees those elements responsible, but he also sees the emperor uh, as uh, wholly responsible as being the supreme commander of the of the military, so that is the general background by which this film has come into existence, and the focus of this film being the man at the center here, Kenzo Okazaki. Then we have this film, The Emperor's Naked Army Marches On, which focuses, as I say, on him and his pursuit of basically trying to find the other uh, officers uh, that were also in the New Guinea campaign or involved in the New Guinea campaign and trying to track them down and essentially interviewing them or confronting them or trying to get information from them uh, with respect to certain incidents that Okuzaki is uh, aware of and he thinks that certain crimes have been committed and he's trying essentially to figure out what happened to certain soldiers who died under mysterious circumstances. And therein lies the direct thrust, if you will, of this film, which is essentially Okazaki going to the family members of certain fallen uh, soldiers or going to the houses of uh, former officers under whom uh, he either served or uh, maybe they were in the same regiment. Um, and or different units but same regiment but uh, who are also directly involved in the incidents in question and along the way we get Okuzaki's uh, own words we see his actions we see the type of person he is we see the tactics he employs in order to try to get information from certain individuals and it therefore becomes this incredibly uh, complex and at times quite disturbing and shocking portrait of a man trying to figure out the truth or a man who is uh, on what he seems to be uh, considering to be a kind of journey of justice. And that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to this film because we're dealing also with the idea of confronting a past, a national past that is um, a kind of almost, it's not overtly considered to be a national shame as it were, but there is a sense of wanting to forget the past. And this is in particular wanting to forget the Japanese wartime past. And this is ex expressed quite vividly by certain participants in this film who are being interviewed. So this film is also in many ways a statement, if you will, about the exploration of wartime past and how to deal with the post-war traumas, if you will, the historically based traumas of that. It's also a murder mystery. It's also a kind of detective story. In other words, Okuzaki is trying to get at the truth. Okuzaki and, and of course the filmmaker Hara himself is trying to get at the truth of what happened to certain soldiers. Um, there are incidents, there are actually a, a, a number of incidents here. It's not just one. There are a number of incidents that Okuzaki is filmed trying to get information about. There's the death of a soldier. Um, there are also other, other deaths of soldiers that 
uh, Okazaki um, uh, feels a certain attachment to. There is also, uh, um, in the middle of the film, uh, quite a harrowing element of the story, which is about the hunt of, for information about what happened to two soldiers who seemed to have been executed uh, at the very end of the war, or actually after the war had uh, been officially been declared over. And so there's a lot of suspicion about what actually happened to these soldiers and why they were killed and what were the circumstances for them being killed and quote-unquote executed. Uh, so there are essentially different strands that are, I think, broadly linked in this uh, documentary, which is focusing on this man and uh, the context of trying to figure out what happened uh, in this uh, a wartime situation. And also, therefore, by extension, this film is about the exploration of Japan's wartime past and dealing with the post-war post traumas and traumatic effects uh, thereof, amongst other things, of course. This is, in a nutshell, what this film is about, but as I will try to explain, I think it's about so much more, and it's very deep, it's very profound, it, is, uh, it will shake you, and it will, I think, uh, leave you quite disturbed. Um, I think it's not a clear case of uh, Hara, the filmmaker, sh following this gentleman around with a camera. No, there is actually much more of a, of a complex interplay between filmmaker and subject. Uh, it's not a clear-cut case of certain things that happen that are being captured on film that might be seen to be morally questionable on the part of the filmmakers. No, no, there is uh, actually a bit of, of a complex relationship between filmmaker and subject, and I think it comes through in certain aspects of the film. So therefore, this film is, is uh, very challenging to the very heart of the medium of the, of the documentary form. So, um, with those general statements uh, out of the way, let me say there that this film is, I think, so important. It goes quite deeply to the heart of some very disturbing matters, and it doesn't quite yield some nice and clean and happy solutions. I think, on the contrary, there is a, a really, uh, there's this feeling of, of dread and a feeling of, of shock. But amongst this, there is always this feeling of wanting to know more and being intrigued and being uh, both mortified and also fascinated by the turn of events that is depicted in this documentary and there are some twists and turns in this documentary that are just unbelievable they have to be seen to be believed they are quite shocking really shocking um, and so with that this is one of the most powerful documentaries i think you will ever come across it's certainly one of the most powerful films that i've ever come across and so I really think it's very important and very valuable in the fabric of Japanese cinema. It is one of the, uh, I think, most important films in Japanese cinema, period. And I hope it's seen by as many people as possible. This is the Facets video DVD of The Emperor's Naked Army Marches On. This doesn't have anything by way of any special features. It does have a booklet which has excerpts from a book about the film that was written by two uh, sort of uh, preeminent uh, Kazuo Horror scholars uh, in the West. So those are Jeffrey Roth and Kenneth Roth. Their essay here, or the excerpts of their book, which is included in the booklet for the, the Facets video DVD, is quite excellent. Uh, highly worth it. I would also recommend, if you can, uh, in English. This is the book in English, which is called Camera Obtrusa. Now, this has notes about the production history, and also it has 
uh, information uh, by Har himself about his documentaries, including, of course, The Emperor's Naked Army Marches On. So, in fact, it's almost like two books in one. You're getting his his notes on the entirety of his his early documentary career. And then you're also getting production notes on The Emperor's Naked Army Marches On. And in fact, I think the production notes are incredibly valuable because, without going into too many spoilers right now, the film presents itself such a vivid account of what's going on and uh, surrounding this character of Okuzaki. But the production notes, which is Hara's uh, production background as he presents it here in writing, presents such a... <laughs> a complicated and quite a turbulent production history regarding this film. And it's very turbulent. And I think the reason why it's turbulent is because uh, uh, Hara and uh, his producer, uh, partner, Sachiko Kobayashi, and the crew were dealing with a, a man here, uh, Okuzaki, who was, uh, I think... Uh, in many ways, at least according to Hara's count, someone who is very difficult to work with uh, in uh, in certain instances, and so that made for very tense filming uh, in many uh, in many instances, which you don't really get a sense of here in this film. You do get a sense of the volatility of or the the. Um, uh, the unexpected nature of the way in which Okuzaki carries himself in the film. So you obviously get that sense in the film quite vividly, but you don't really get a sense of the tension that existed between uh, Hara and Okuzaki and Okuzaki and other members of the crew. So, and also there are some interesting, very interesting uh, uh, tidbits of information about how Okuzaki, I'm sorry, about Hara dealt with other members of the crew. Uh, there are certain uh, back and forth with his editor and about how certain scenes were uh, excised or cut out of the film. There are also scenes about um, information about how um, there were other exchanges that weren't filmed or recorded but that were actually quite explosive in terms of the subject matter and goes into quite uh, vivid detail here. There's also footage of uh, I don't want to go into too much detail, but there are some instances of, of footage that was shot but was actually, uh, for certain reasons, not uh, able to be put into the film. And so there's actually descriptions of those, um, those, those blocks of footage as well. And so those are, I think, a number of examples why I think the production notes that is included in this book, uh, Camilla Obtrusa, which is in English, uh, English translated, I think makes this I th a very valuable supplement to this film. And I highly recommend that you read this book along with watching the film as well as other works by Hara.